Imagine if you could connect your guitar or piano to a device that lets you see the music you're playing, or even just plug in your phone and watch your favorite songs come to life in light. In this video, I'll show you how I built a portable 7 band music visualizer that lights up in real time with every note you play. It works with both electroacoustic and digital instruments, and the best part is that you can build one too. Whether you're a musician, a maker, or just someone who loves the aesthetic of this device, I can assure you that this project is super fun to build and incredibly satisfying to watch in action. So grab your tools and let's bring music to life. Let's start with the components. For the brain of this project, I'm using the Xiao Sam D21, a super compact and low power microcontroller that's ideal for portable builds. To break down the audio signal into seven different frequency bands, we'll use the MSG EQ7 module. It's a spectrum analyzer chip that filters the audio input and outputs the amplitude of each band as an analog signal, which the microcontroller can easily read. For the visuals, we'll employ LED strip lights, with six LEDs per band, totaling 42, that respond to the intensity of each frequency range. These are addressable RGB LEDs, meaning that the entire strip can be controlled using just a single digital pin. A touch sensor is included to switch between different lighting modes. Power comes from a 2000 mAh LiPo battery, boosted to 5 volts via step-up converter to keep everything running smoothly. To recharge the battery, the circuit will have a TP4057 charging module. A physical switch will be used to turn the entire system on and off. Also, a few resistors will be needed to make voltage dividers so the microcontroller can safely read the equalizer output as well as the battery level. Lastly, some components will be soldered onto a perf board to keep the build compact and easy to fit inside the enclosure. Now, to understand how this project works, let's start with the basic idea. I like to play guitar and piano occasionally. I'm not a pro at all. If anything, my neighbors probably think I'm torturing my instrument. But I thought that a good way to make me want to play and learn more is by making it visually appealing. Kind of like the equivalent of putting a Subway Surfers gameplay on top of a video that is longer than three seconds so your dopamine fried brain can watch it. So that's when I thought of building a device that could turn every sound I make into something cool to look at. Full disclosure though, I am not reinventing the wheel here. Music visualizers have existed for a while, and you can even buy them on Amazon. However, since I already had this little spectrum analyzer, I thought, hey, why buy a cheap music visualizer that I could get in a day when I could build a cooler one that will probably take one month of my time? I know. Genius. So the idea is simple. Take the audio signal from my guitar, piano, or even my phone, feed it into the analyzer module, which splits it into seven different frequency bands, and then light up some LEDs based on how strong each band is. That way, every time I play a chord, the visualizer will react in real time. So to test that my theory is correct, I built an MVC, or minimum viable circuit, on a breadboard. It has the analyzer module connected to the microcontroller and also six LED lights to represent one frequency band. That way, if something catches fire, I only lose six LEDs instead of 42. This setup lets me quickly test if the audio signal is being split correctly, if the signal levels make sense, and if the microcontroller is reacting in real time. Also, the band I'm representing with the LEDs is the third one, which is centered at 400 Hz, right in the sweet spot for many instruments. For guitar, that band should pick up the mid-range fundamentals and the overtone pretty well, especially when you're strumming chords. Lower bands shouldn't light up as much unless you're hitting the low E string like a bass player, but band 3 should give us a nice signal. We'll also be able to see the response of the other bands using the serial monitor. So let's plug in the guitar and test this thing. All right, here we go. <laughs> Look at that. The LEDs are reacting exactly how I hoped. Thank you, God! The mid band lights up quickly with each strum. And when we check the serial monitor, we can see that the other frequency bands are also reacting. Even the higher ones jump a bit, probably because of harmonics or me like strumming too hard. This confirms that the spectrum analyzer is splitting the signals correctly and that the microcontroller is reading the values in real time. So with the MVC working as expected, we can now start designing the enclosure. Since each band will be approximately as wide as the LED strip and the device will be portable, we need a design that keeps everything tight and easy to carry around while looking clean. 
So I started modeling a slim enclosure where each vertical LED strip would sit behind a translucent cover to diffuse the light. The electronics would be placed in the back of the device, which has holes for the power switch, the charging port and the audio jack. It will also have a space on the side to place the touch sensor. It's a simple but elegant design that kind of reminds me of the Apple aesthetic. And the coolest thing is that even though I could 3D print all the parts, I decided to get a few of them manufactured with Sometry, who's also the sponsor of this video. If you've never used them before, Sometry is a platform that makes it ridiculously easy to get custom parts made, whether you need CNC machining, 3D printing or even laser cutting, which is what I chose for this project. You just upload your model, pick your material, finish and quantity and boom, you get an instant quote and delivery date. Honestly, it's kind of insane how simple it is. This was my first time trying a manufacturing service and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. I used Sometry to get the front panel made in polished stainless steel and the translucent LED covers in frosted acrylic. Since those are the first things people will see when the device is turned off, I wanted them to look super clean and professional. And the parts arrived in exactly five days, just like they promised. I also got the Plagitech logo cut in stainless steel and it looks amazing. So huge thanks to Sometry for sponsoring this project. And if you're thinking of building something cool and want it to be elegant and durable, I definitely recommend checking them out. You can even use the coupon code PLACHITECH25 to get $25 off any order of $100 or more. I'll leave the link in the description of this video so you can try it out for yourself. Now before 3D printing the rest of the enclosure, I was still a bit unsure on how deep the LED should have been in the device. Ideally, I wanted to make that distance 10 millimeters, so the enclosure would be as thin as possible. However, I didn't know if the empty space between the LEDs and the acrylic cover would be enough to spread out the light reasonably well. So what I did is 3D print two different models, one that was 10 millimeters deep and the other one 15 millimeters. I then placed the LEDs inside them and compared the diffusion of both. And at the end, 15 millimeters was the clear winner. Once I got that out of the way, I proceeded to 3D print everything in black PLA filament. Guess what? We now have all the parts and components that we need to build this device. So it's time to start the first part of the assembly. First, I tested the LED strip before doing anything else. Because the last thing I want is to spend an hour cutting and soldering only to realize one LED was dead from the start. Thankfully, everything lit up perfectly. Once I confirmed they were working, I chopped the strip into seven groups of six LEDs, one group per band. I stuck each one inside the enclosure using their own adhesive backing, but since that adhesive is pretty shit, I added a bit of hot glue to actually make it stick. Nothing fancy, just enough to make sure they don't fall off. So now that we have the LEDs placed in the first part of the enclosure, it's time to begin the actual foam part, soldering. To connect everything, I used two different types of wire, 26 gauge for the power rails and 30 gauge for the data lines. I like using thinner wires for data because it's easier to both manage and fit everything. I soldered every column one by one, power, ground, and data. Satisfying, but definitely a patience test. After wiring everything up, I powered it on again to double check, and boom, all the LEDs turned on just like before. Where off to a good start. Now that we have the LEDs laid out in columns, we can finally program the firmware and check if it's working as intended. The code basically reads the analog values coming from the analyzer chip, which gives us the intensity of the seven different frequency bands, and maps those values to the LED columns. The louder a band is, the more LEDs light up. But here's the thing, not all instruments behave the same. For the guitar, I noticed that the low end and the high end bands needed the most gain, while the mids were already coming through pretty evenly. So I boosted those outer bands just enough to make the music visualize to respond more naturally when playing. The digital piano was trickier though. The first band, which covers the deep bass, didn't light up much, probably because the piano's internal samples don't emphasize sub-bass frequencies, especially through the headphone output. So I had to boost that one quite a bit. On the other hand, the highest band barely responded at all. It seems like digital pianos don't really generate those ultra-high harmonics. So I ended up leaving that band unboosted to avoid amplifying noise. The bass line I used was my phone playing music at 80% volume. I ran a few tests, saw which bands were too dim, and then adjusted the game manually until it looked right for each instrument. It's not super precise, it's more like a play around with it until it feels good approach, but it worked. So now when I play my guitar or piano, the visualizer actually reacts like you would expect. And obviously I'll show you the final result in the demo. All right, let's go back to assembling this thing. First, I soldered cables to the analyzer chip, the power switch, the touch sensor, the boost converter, and the charging module. Once those were ready, I hot glued all of them into place inside the circuit enclosure. Then, I super glued this little 3D printed translucent cover for the charging LED, just to keep everything neat and protected. The battery and boost converter also got hot glued in. Make sure to have already set the converter's output to 5 volts. After that, I connected these first components following the full circuit diagram. You can find the diagram as well as all the 3 models and code you need in my Discord server, so make sure to join it. The link is down in the description 
description of this video. Next, I soldered the SAMD21 to a perf board, along with the resistors that work as voltage dividers. That whole board then got hot glued into the enclosure too. With that in place, I connected all the components to the appropriate SAMD21 pins and to the voltage dividers as previously shown in the diagram. After that, it was time to start sealing everything up. I screwed the second half of the main body into the first half, passed the LED cables through the opening, and then super glued the circuit holding enclosure in place. The LEDs were connected to the SAMD21 and power lines, and while testing, I noticed the charging module was getting a little warm, so I added a tiny heatsink on top to help with that. Then I uploaded the code, did a quick test with my phone to make sure everything was reacting properly, and it was indeed. Not gonna lie, I was expecting it to just blow up, because that's how my luck works. The circuit top cover was super glued, and the metal front panel that I manufactured with Summetry was placed in with just pressure. But if you 3D printed it, you can glue it instead. To soften the look of the lights, I also added some translucent covers I 3D printed. Once those were on, I pressed in the acrylic covers themselves, no glue needed. Next, I glued the Plachi logo right on top of the circuit lid as a finishing touch, and then screwed the lid in. And that's it, the build is now complete. Alright, moment of truth. Let me show you how this thing performs in the real world. First, I turn it on by flipping the switch. When it boots up, the battery level is shown. The more bands that light up, the more battery the device has. Then, I use the touch sensor on the side to cycle through the available settings. First, I select the instrument. Let's go with guitar to start. You just press and hold the sensor for a couple of seconds to confirm the selection. After that, I pick the lighting mode. I made two different color profiles. One where each band has its own fixed color, and another where the colors change based on intensity. I'll choose the first one. Okay, let's start. For the guitar, I'll just plug it in directly to the jack output. Now, let's move on to the piano. For this instrument, we'll have to split the output into two, one for the visualizer and another one for an amplifier. In this case, I'm just using these cheap speakers because, well, I didn't want to buy a $200 amplifier just for a 30 second demo. Anyways, check it out. Finally, here's what it looks like when I play a random song from my phone. Perfect if you just want a mini light show on your desk while you listen to your favorite music. To charge it, just turn it off, plug in a USB-C cable connected to a 5 volt power supply, and wait for the light to turn blue. Well, this is definitely one of the coolest things I've ever built, so I hope you liked it. As I mentioned before, if you want to get the files to build your own, just join my Discord server using the link below. And hey, if you want to go a step further and support what I do, you can also join my Patreon. I post weekly behind the scenes updates where I share progress, uh, fixes, stuff that didn't work, and random stuff that didn't make it into the video. Plus, you'll get your name featured at the end of my videos like these guys right here. You guys are amazing. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you in the next project.